And these were women who would say that they had chosen. We also, as I said, don't separate prostitution and trafficking. And we don't do that because trafficking as such is just a transport from one point to the other. Traffickers will always have a purpose. That's the whole idea with trafficking. You traffic something because you want to sell drugs and make money off it. Drugs are not worth anything unless you sell them. Same goes with women. You have a business person, you have merchandise, and you have somebody who wants to buy it. Trafficker, woman, buyer. So most, and globally, of course, the majority of victims, again, are victims of trafficking for sexual exploitation in the prostitution and pornography industry. Question number two, what is done to women in prostitution? I know lots of women who have been in prostitution. I know women who are in prostitution because it takes a long time to, for often for women to get out. And what they all tell me is, of course, all the physical violence, the murders. We know, also from talking to women, that a woman who is in prostitution wakes up whenever she wakes up, if she has been to bed, and she knows that in front of her she will encounter five to ten men who will touch her, who will penetrate her vaginally, anally, in the mouth, who she has to perform and be who she is not five to ten times a day. And if you have been in prostitution, you know that it's not usually not enough with one or two because that will not make enough money for whatever you need it to. And certainly if you have a pimp, there is not enough in two or three. Five to ten is what women usually say. And those who say that prostitution is a choice, who say that women do this voluntarily, always refuse to talk about that part. No matter where you are prostituted, if it's in a nightclub, or it's in the street, or it's in the escort service, that is the same thing. That is what happened to women. And to survive that, and let's go to, I usually put more into this, but we don't have time. To survive that, we will go to question number three. What are the consequences of having been in prostitution and being in there? <coughs> well, we know that women who, being penetrated many times a day, is not something you can live with you will not be able to survive that for a very long time. And pimps are really generous. We can see that in all our procuring and trafficking cases in Sweden. Pimps have kindly provided cocaine, heroin, amphetamine, methamphetamine, whatever it is, to keep women going. Because she is the income. And if she flips out, that's a lost opportunity to make money. The law prohibits the purchase of sexual services anywhere. Not on the street, just like the solicitation here. Not only on the streets, I mean. In brothels, uh, in hotels, wherever you, a man can think of purchasing some. Uh, so the social worker group work independently of the welfare system with uh, women, and, women and young men in prostitution to get them out. And with that, of course, comes food, education, you know, welfare, everything on the list because otherwise it would not be a real exit program. So we have given money specifically to better women's shelters to educate those who are there and so that they can receive women. And there are other groups and NGOs, of course, also that work with women in prostitution and now also victims of trafficking from other countries. Finale, we got to talk about the Canadian contact. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hand it over. Well, yeah. <laughs>
Not too many. So that tells me that probably the city of Vancouver wasn't that interested in having a rich dialogue since I've got 35 or 40 people here today. Sounds like there's quite a lot of people in Vancouver who are interested in seriously thinking, what can I do right now to help the women who are trying to get out of prostitution and to end this industry in my city? So I suggest you read this and think about what, um, what, what do you want in your city as a... Uh, the city is asking, what should we do? They have an online survey, which is very hard to find on their website. <laughs> so this is at livingincommunity.ca. Yeah, livingincommunity.ca, and then there's a link to get involved, and then there's a take our survey. You can fill out this survey I did. Um, the particular things I said I did not want was I did not want um, to be educating police officers about what they should do to, to prostituted <coughs> women. What I do want is the police to come when women who are experiencing male violence call. That's the other thing women tell us at our crisis line, is the police mostly don't come. They could start coming tomorrow, that would help quite a bit. Um, so fill out the survey if you can. Another thing to pay attention to is the Canadian uh, Parliament, the federal par parliament has a subcommittee on solicitation laws, including our local representatives Libby Davies and Hetty Fry. Um, the, the solicitation, the subcommittee on solicitation laws will be releasing reports sometime, we don't know when, they're doing this process of consultation. And it is possible for you to have a say on what you think the outcome of the solicitation laws subcommittee should be. I think that the solicitation laws subcommittee should wait the um, input of progressive women's groups and groups of women who have exited prostitution greater than anything else. That has not been their process, but it is not too late to bang off a letter, letter to Libby or Dr. Hetty Fry um, and have that, let them know what we think about that. Uh, Ganilla raised a lot of uh, points about the importance of thinking of trafficking and prostitution together. That's also important for us. There's recent legislation in Canada that um, you might remember it. Women who are trafficked here on visas to be strippers could apply to get residents, uh, anyways, trafficked here to get strippers. That's one of the, work permit. As, as a work permit. So that's one way that women are trafficked into Canada. 2010, the Olympics are coming to Vancouver in 2010, and I personally am not backing the bid, but that's okay. Um, I am interested in the Canadian women hockey team, but I cannot, I cannot in good faith have any of, anyone in my life cheering on the Canadian women's hockey team while a safe zone could be set up around the Pacific Coliseum or around GM Place for men to drive up and use prostitutes, which was the strategy that took place in Berlin when the World Cup was there this summer. So I mean, Athens of the, the prior uh, Olympics. And the question in my mind is if the city of Vancouver is promoting safe zones or safer zones or promoting the idea of safer um, prostitution trade in Vancouver. I am very worried about the young women in Prince Rupert, in Kelowna, in Hope, who come to my transition house and say they were promised a lot to come to the big city by the guy in the Hummer and the bling or whatever he looks like when he cruises into their small town. And that's one of the forms of trafficking we need to watch out for with the Olympics coming is the small town younger women being lured to the big city to service the sexual tr uh, tourist trade. So I thank you all for coming today to learn from us of what we think.